morning, everyone, and welcome to St. Margaret's. Today, we are indeed very honored to have with us a very, very special guest celebrant, Cardinal Dolan, our Archbishop. And so we welcome Archbishop Dolan, Cardinal Dolan. He wanted to be with us today to celebrate uh, Mass with us. So please stand as we begin now the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. Your Eminence, on behalf of our parish and the town of friendly people, we welcome you to Pearl River in St. Margaret's. And how appropriate it is if you think about today, we will hear in the gospel the parable of the pearl of great price and how fitting it is for our Cardinal to be here on Pearl Day, if you will, <laughs> and especially Pearl River, but most particularly the, the beautiful pearl of St. Margaret's Parish. And Your Eminence, it's a great honor for us to be with you, and thank you so very much for thinking of us and sharing your, your priesthood and the liturgy with us, and most, most cordial welcome to St. Margaret's and to Pearl River. God bless Aye you. Aye. 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 It's my honor, Father Rosser, thank you. Father Ransford, it's so good to be here. I was gonna thank Father Eric for inviting me, but he didn't. I just called and said I'm showing up. <laughs> but I love doing it these days when usually, because of the summer months, I might not have an official place to go and I take off from the cathedral. I like just to parachute into parishes, so thanks. Thanks for your warm welcome. It's good to be with you for Sunday Mass. Then we might offer this greatest of all prayers, the holy sacrifice of the Mass, the more worthily, we call to mind our sins and ask for the unfailing mercy of Jesus. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I've done and in what I failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting.
God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy, bestow in abundance your mercy upon us, and grant that with you as our ruler and our guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Kings. The Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream at night. God said, Ask something of me, and I will give it to you. Solomon answered, O Lord my God, you have made me your servant, king to succeed my father David. But I am a mere youth, not knowing at all how to act. I serve you in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a people so vast that it cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding heart to judge your people and to distinguish right from wrong. For who is able to govern this vast people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon made this request. So God said to him, because you have asked this, not for a long life for yourself, nor for riches, nor for the life of your enemies, but for understanding, so that you may know what is right, I do as you requested. I give you a heart so wise and understanding that there has never been anyone like you up to now, and after you, there will come no one equal to you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, we know that all things work for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field, which a person finds and hides again, and out of joy goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls. When he finds a pearl of great price, he goes and sells all that he has and buys it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Once again, everybody, a blessed Sunday, and it's an honor and a joy for me to be with you for Sunday Mass here at St. Margaret of Antioch in Pearl River. Um, I love doing this, getting out to be with God's people uh, for Sunday Mass. I usually do it on Saturday night, and Sunday morning, most of the time, I have 10, 15 Mass at St. Patrick's. But when I don't, here I am. And uh, this just gives me a chance to see you. Uh, to offer this great prayer that defines us as Catholics together on this, the Lord's Day, and to let you know how proud I am to be your Archbishop, how much I love you, how grateful, how very grateful I am to you for your love uh, of Jesus and his church. Uh, I understand, too, we got a good number of people with us on live stream, and I'm, I'm glad they're here uh, with us as well. You got a great parish here. This isn't my first visit. I've been here before. I have a long way to go. I'm going to have to come back to Pearl River often because so far I've only been to 14 of the 23 bars. So I still got, I still got quite a bit of pilgrimage to make. So you got a wonderful parish here. There's a great, you're known for a real cohesive community spirit. You're known for your excellent, excellent grade school. All oh, your, your, the vitality of your sacramental and liturgical life, the outreach that you do to the community. You've got a good thing going on here at St. Margaret's, and I praise God for that. Um, and thanks for your patience during what's been an extraordinarily difficult time for all of us. Almost five months now. Things have just, we find her, I talked to my mom. My mom back in St. Louis is 91. She's in good health, thank God. She's in an assisted living, and she, uh, she says, you know, boy, I'm glad I'm here because we get good care. Nobody's got it yet. But she said, I think it'd be easier if I just knew when this was going to end. And we, we all say that, don't we? My mom said to me, I often find myself saying, how long, Lord? How long is this going to go on? I said, Mom, you're in good company. Not only are we all asking the Lord that, but that's an ancient prayer from the Bible. In the Psalms, those beautiful prayers of the people of Israel that we use as well, just had, just, uh, had the responsorial psalm. The psalmist will often say, How long, O Lord? In tribulations and difficulties, the people of Israel used to look up to the Lord and said, Lord, how long? How long is this going on? So thanks for your fidelity and your perseverance in a very difficult time. I thought today, if I, would you just bear with me as I speak about prayer, speak about prayer this morning, because that's what God's holy word from the Bible suggests. I, I don't know about you, a lot of people have told me, well, you know, this time of uh, quarantine and difficulty and worrying about the virus and losing people and not being able to be with them, at least I tried my best to pray, to pray a little better. But we also, at the same time, say, but you know what, I wish I, wish I could pray better. I wish, my, I wish I would get distracted. I wish I, I, wish I knew what to say. I, I wish I could just be, be more faithful and patient in my prayer. And so God always gives us little lessons on prayer. And this morning he gives us three, three very good lessons about prayer. And here they are, everybody. Number one, here's the first lesson about prayer. And it comes from our first reading from the Bible. Because that first reading from the Bible is actually a prayer from King Solomon. 
King Solomon is praying to God because God invited him to. He said, Solomon, ask me, pray to me for anything you want. Now, you think of what Solomon could have asked for. A lot of riches, a lot of power, the defeat of his enemies, a, a great new palace, beautiful wife. He could have asked for a lot of stuff. What did he pray for? He prayed for a spiritual gift. He prayed for a, uh, a virtue. He asked the Lord for an understanding heart. He asked for the gift of wisdom, wisdom. And God said, Solomon, well done. God was kind of surprised. He said, boy, you could have asked me for a bunch of stuff, but here you asked me for something for your soul. You asked me for the gift of wisdom and you've got it in abundance, all right? We're sort of like that, right? We pray a lot that we might win the lottery. We pray that our MRI exam will come back clean. We, those of you in school, we, we pray that we'll pass exams. We pray that we'll get a job. We pray for a lot of earthly things, and that ain't bad. We, God wants us to do that, keep doing that. But does he ever love it when we ask him for a gift for our soul, a spiritual gift, a virtue? Give me patience, Lord. I need to be able to forgive people. I need more trust. I need more faith. I need more hope. I need more love. God loves the prayer when we ask him for a spiritual gift. So that's lesson number one. Here's lesson number two about prayer, everybody. One of my favorite lines of all in the good book is this morning's second reading, St. Paul's letter to the Romans. All things work for good for those who love God. That's got to be one of the most consoling verses in all of sacred scripture. All things work for good for those who love God. You see, if we got that, if we've got that trust in serenity, our prayer is a lot better. We say, Lord, look, you're in charge, all right? You know what I want, you know what I need. Um, you're in charge, and I, I trust you. Everything's gonna work out, but I am worried, I'm afraid. Uh, I find myself a little down now. But can I just say to you, I know that all things work for good for those who love God, and I do love you, Lord. That Boy, that gives us a serenity, a peace. That gives us a confidence. I don't know if you remember, um, one of Pope St. John Paul II's visits back to his beloved Poland. It was his second one in 1981, and it was a very tense time in Poland. A half million Soviet troops were poised at the border, ready to restore the communist tyranny in uh, Poland, which is being seriously questioned by solidarity, by the move for democracy and freedom most of which had been generated by Pope John Paul II's first visit, 1979. So here, it's very tense, the world is watching. And we got, when he got off the plane, he was met by the dictator, General Jaroselski. General Jaroselski has his greeting. He's holding the papers at the airport in his military uniform. And you could see his hands were shaking, the papers, are uh, all over the place. His legs, you can see, were knocking. So there's this military dictator backed up by a half a million Soviet bayonets, scared to death. And when they switched to John Paul II, he simply was there, his head bowed with a smile on his face, the picture of serenity. Serenity, trust, and confidence. John Paul knew all all things work for good for those who love God. You know what a beautiful prayer is, everybody? Lord, I pray for what I think I need. Would you please give me what you know I need? There's serenity and trust. That's the second lesson. And here's number three, everybody. In the gospel, Jesus talks to us about that pearl, as Father Rosser said, that pearl of great price, which is our faith. Our faith in the kingdom of God is that pearl of great price. You figure it this way, folks. Every time we pray, we exercise our faith muscle. The very fact that we pray means that we believe someone's listening. 
That means we believe in God. We believe he has power. We believe he listens to us. We exercise our faith muscle. And when our faith, that pearl of great price, is alive, prayer comes much easier. Jesus, I trust in thee. It's interesting when we have great crises, you know, like you know, like when you when you hear about a mass shooting, for instance. What's the first thing you say? Oh my God! Oh my God! Almost naturally, we turn to the Lord. Almost naturally, we exercise our faith, that pearl of great price. And you know yourself in moments of terrible crisis, maybe when you've lost somebody dear to you. What do we find ourselves saying? What in the world would I do without my faith? What would I do without my faith? That's that pearl of great price. I know about you. Uh, I need all the help I can get in my prayers. I sure try every day to pray. But I'm always wishing it could be a little richer, a little longer, a little less distracted, a little bit more faithful and patient. So I'm grateful today in God's holy word from the Bible that he says to me, Timothy, here's three things I want you to do. Pray for spiritual gifts. Number two, believe that everything works out for the good of those who love God. And number three, it's all about faith. That's our pearl of great price. Here's a good prayer, the creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I can sue for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. For all who face financial hardship because of the virus, that they not lose hope, but that all people support one another and find ways to help in this time of need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who minister in the church, eager to share its lasting treasure, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who care for the sick and the dying, showing that the Lord's love in their daily actions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the souls of the faithful departed from our parish who have gone before us in faith and love, May they receive the reward of their goodness. And let us remember in a special way at this Mass, Tommy Badger. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In the silence of our hearts, we present to God our particular intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In our prayers, we count on the unfailing perpetual help of Mary, our mother, of St. Margaret of Antioch, our patron, and of St. Patrick, the patron of the Archdiocese, and of St. Anne and St. Joachim on their feast day, as we make these in all of our prayers, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
my friends pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Heavenly Father, Almighty and Eternal God, you laid the very foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and likeness, set humanity over the whole world and all its wonder, to rule in your name over all you have made, and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so, with the angels and saints of heaven, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. <laughs> for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. And we in his word and drink his cup, he proclaimed your death, Lord, unto your glory. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on the soul, we pray, and with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed Apostles, St. Joachim and Anne, and all the saints who will please you throughout the ages, may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's 
command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of God be with you always.
Sensitive to our good people at home joining us live stream, shall we say the spiritual communion? My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you, never. Permit me to be separated from you. Let us pray. We have just consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thanks again, everybody. Sure was good being, being with you, our people at home. Uh, thanks, Father Rasser, Father Clark, for being good shepherds here. And thanks to all of you for the wonderful parish that you've got. It's the Feast of St. Anne, did you know that? Anybody, any of the ladies named Anne? Happy Feast Day, Anne, way to go. She's, uh, <laughs> you know, she's, uh, she's powerful. St. Anne, she was the mother of the Blessed Mother, Joachim and Anne. And um, she, of course, is the one that found St. Joseph for Mary, her daughter. So she's great for finding husbands. And in Ireland, and have you ever heard this prayer, Father Eric or Father, Father Ransford? In Ireland, if a, if a young lady is looking for a husband, she will say, St. Anne, St. Anne, find me a man as fast as you can. <laughs> <laughs> Good St. Anne. So the Lord be with you. Amen. Through the intercession of Mary, our mother, and of her parents, Joachim and Anne on their feast day. The intercession of St. Margaret of Antioch, our patron, and St. Patrick, the patron saint of the Archdiocese of New York. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. I'm sorry I can't shake your hand or embrace you on the way out, but we can at least wave, huh?